Hi, I'm going to show you how to create a machine learning decision tree classifier in Power BI with not that many lines of code. And as you see, we have a visualized decision tree that is classifying whether someone has left our company or stayed based on the features that we are passing in. So at this point, we have a Python visual here. And if you see, if I click on this visual and I move over to the visualization pane, this is a Python visual. So that means we've created this based on some scripts that we added it to the script editor. So here's a Jupyter Notebook. And I just want to review the data set very quickly before I go over the code. So I've just imported pandas and loaded in the data set. This is an HR data set that gives us the satisfaction level, last evaluation, number of projects, monthly hours, time at the company, work accidents. If the person quit the company, and you can see that here, and that's um, given by one if they quit the company, zero if they didn't quit. If they were promoted in the last five years, which is also a zero and one. The department, which is sales, the salary, which is low, medium, and high, and then a management score. The most important thing here is that you can see we have different types of data. We have numerical and categorical, so we're going to have to turn that into all numerical to run that in our model. So let's take a look at our code that we're going to add to Power BI. You can see what I've done here is I've loaded in the libraries that were important. I've imported pandas, which allows us to bring in this data here and manipulate it. NumPy, I didn't need, but I bring it in by default if I have to do some calculations. So we're using the scikit-learn library that it gives us this decision tree classifier. So I brought in the tree, which allows us to plot and have some other access to this scikit-learn decision tree. I am using the decision tree classifier here. So I've imported that from the SK Learn model selection. I brought in train test split, which allows us to train and split our data into a learning set and then a test set. I brought in matplotlib that allows us to visualize this. And then we have that data set variable. So when you create any data with the script editor in Power BI, it saves it as this variable data set. So I use DF just because it's shorter and easier to add. I've converted those categorical variables into dummy variables and dummy variables will be the way we turn that into zeros and ones. And I've just drop the first one of those. Here, I've identified my X and Y variable. The X and Y will be our features. So our features are going to be everything that we use to predict whether someone quit the company. And Y will be whether the person quit the company. And actually here, we're going to split the data first. So we split this data into our training and test set by adding the X and Y here. And what we get back is X train, X test, Y train, and Y test. And we're going to use that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a classifier. And we're just using the variable CLF. We're going to get that decision tree classifier. We're passing in X and Y that are our training set that we split here from X and Y. We fit the data, which essentially is training the data. So I'm going to add that, train the data, train the model. So we train the model by fitting the X training set and the Y training set. And then we're going to create a prediction and then all we're doing here is visualizing our data with the tree and plot tree. And I created the class names here. 
because I wanted to show you uh, where it says stayed and quit. And we'll go over that in a little bit. But let's just run this. You can see how complex a decision tree model can be. And I'm going to eliminate this part and just run this. And that means we're running this with all of these features. They may not be needed, but we're going to run that just to see. So I'm going to run this. And what we'll get back is a visualized decision tree. And you can see it's quite small. We can definitely change how we see this by creating a bigger tree. And let me just show that by using the figure size here. So I'm going to use plt.figure size. And then I'm going to pass in size. So I'm going to use 12 and 12, which are the inches. And I'm going to run that again. And now you can see that it gets a little bit bigger. And I'm going to show you how we make this a little bit more visible by using the font size and Power BI. So I'm going to use font size here where we can just change that parameter and we'll get increasingly better visuals, you can see. So we're going to have to play around with this a little bit in Power BI and we won't use as many nodes. So we've just copied this code in and we've used a font size of eight. But what I want to show you here is we're not using all of the columns. We're using salary and total time at the company to determine whether we or someone left the company. So if I close this, we can kind of evaluate this tree. Each one of these decisions are a node and when a node stops, it's called a leaf. So let's take a look at how we interpret this and then we'll play around a little bit. So the total time at the company is our first decision criteria. And if it's less than 6.5 years, if that is true, we go to the left. If that is false, we go to the right. So if it's a yes, left, no, right. So if less than the company, the person stayed from, we can see how many samples or how many, how many samples are in this decision. And then we can see the genie metric, which tells us the amount of bias or which way it goes. And the higher that number is, the darker this color is going to be. And we can see that the majority of this class stayed. So that means if we have this 27, 19 of that 27 stayed, have less than six and a half years, we move to the next decision node, which did this person stay less than two years? And if that's a yes, we have another evaluation criteria, which is the salary is low, which both terminate. So this would be a leaf. So then we know that we are unable to tell if someone quit with those two features. But if we go back up to another node and we go to salary is medium. So if the salary is less than medium and you can see that we have 15 samples here, if this is true, we go to yes. Then we look at the total time in the company again. And if the total time in the company is less than 5.5, and the salary is less than 0 0.5, which means that the salary is not medium because we have zeros and ones. That means we have a salary of a low, which means this person quit. So these features here would help us determine whether that person quit. On these nodes, you can see that the class is all stayed. And this class here means that the majority of these are stayed. The major and the majority here would be they quit. So the majority class here would be quit and the majority class would be that they quit. So let's add some complexity to this. Right now we have salary and total time 
that are used as the features to predict. But let's add in departments and see what happens. Then that's going to be another decision feature that is adding more complexity to our tree. And you can see it gets much more complex. It's difficult to see this. And we can see we're already able to predict some of the quitting or the people who have left our company, which are in the blue. So, of course, I can go down to our code, and if I want to keep all of these nodes, because we don't know what the ideal depth of our tree should be. And you can see that our tree has quite a lot of stages here. So, we can keep that depth, and we can maybe change our font size to be able to see that better. Maybe we change that to a four and we run this again by hitting the run button and we can see it executing here. We can see a little bit more of that tree. But what we can do is say, OK, we can see we're able to predict whether someone is left at one, two, three, four, maybe four different decision layers so we can go back over to our classifier and change the depth where we put in a parameter of max depth equals four and let's run that and now you can see it's a little bit easier to see we can increase that font size let's increase it to 10 to see if we're able to see everything and now we can see those decision nodes there and we can figure out out of these features what causes someone to quit. So this is just a very easy way to create a model and visualize this in Power BI. You definitely have to look for your confusion matrix and your accuracy score and learn how to prune a tree so you don't have overfitting but that's outside of the scope of this video. Please let me know if you would like to have a full walkthrough of decision trees and how we prune them. But I hope that shows you a quick and easy way to create a decision tree machine learning model in Power BI. Thank you.